where it's just everybody talking. Who would have thought? Um, so the idea is that um, basically we go around the room and uh, based on the chapter that we just read, uh, some people just have to pick something that they learned about the chapter um, that they can remember and just tell us about it. So it's kind of, there, there's a lot of uh, learning value in just re repeating something, e even if it's almost word for word. Actually, the way I learn stuff a lot of the time is I just copy stuff that as I'm reading it, and just the process of writing it down, you just naturally learn it. So anyway, um, so we start on my left. Um, and so the, these, the, the topic, <laughs> this is just from anything in the book that you guys can remember. Anything, um, and just you know, two or three minutes, and then hopefully we can finish up uh, yeah, so around I, nine. So, so my favorite chapter so far have been um, like on uh, on TCP. So this is something that we we actually deal with every day, but we don't really deal with it directly. And then um, just understanding how TCP works um, really like it, it just it helped me to understand why certain things are done, not just what needs to be done. Um, so, like for example, uh, TCP has uh, how TCP actually figure out you know uh, how much we should send in a chunk is by incurring incurring Ouch. packet loss. Oh, sorry. That's no, okay. And then um, so slow start. Right. So yeah. how we start is like I start with this window size. So and anyway, then, maybe you could step back and what's the, uh, how, how does how does the TCP connection start? How does one, anybody from the audience, how does it start? Hello, I would like to hear a TCP joke. <laughs> would you like to hear a TCP joke? Yes, yes I would like, I would to, like to, to hear it. <laughs> That's a slow connection. <laughs> now, you say? Yes, thank I, I'm going to tell you a TCP joke. Okay, I will give you a TCP joke. There you go. Uh, there's a live demonstration <laughs> of how TCP connection started. That's really good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a bit slow like, server and a bit yeah, slow client, should, but it's all right. You You're doing the slow start thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. 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 kind. <laughs> uh, yes, and there's a lot of geeky jokes. Yeah. But TCP is slow start. Yeah, okay, tell us about that. Um, it's cool. All right, so those are the... Let's say, I don't know what's your capacity, server client, let's just say server client, I don't know what's your uh, capacity, so I'll just test it. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start small and see if you're able to reply to me in time. Um, great, so then what do I do next? I increase it, and then I increase it exponentially until I incur a packet loss. I, 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 send, I send like this, this much and I only get this much back. And I'm like, all right, so now it looks like your capacity is between this and this, and then, that's the end of the, what is it called, the capacity of Con uh, congestion, congestion window. control. Window. Yeah. And then, uh, then there's the next phase starts, which is congestion avoidance. Mm -hmm. So how, how, do we, how do we figure out? Then it just drops, and then there's like algorithms to figure out well, how, how you drop it until you meet, until you find a sweet spot where we speak at the right window size. Um, and then so, and then from there on, we just we just constantly speak at this one of size uh, until this uh, this is like terminated, or I, I start to see like uh, packet loss again, and then I adjust it, and so on and so forth. So TCP is very smart in that sense. And then there are many like uh, performance um, there are many performance uh, improvement you can make just just by tweaking your server, like increase the, for example, increasing the initial window size. Yep. Um, and then, uh, and you actually there, had, there's a, a you had a practical, you had a practical learning from this, remember? I don't really remember you, which one. You, so you, they have you, like a checklist no, and no, then- but remember you changed some setting. Oh, it wasn't. At work, it didn't improve it. Um, no, it's not, no, it's not, it's not, it's not approved. It was more like, like you know, I can't to demonstrate like with matrix like how this thing is gonna like what do you expect and whether it worked or not so like I couldn't find a way to measure it because it's, su it's, it's at such a low level and I kind of have to uh, mimic the request pattern to prove that this actually works and oh yeah I work for uh, at network. At network. I work for Comcast so we handle lots of uh, bid requests uh, for real time bidding um, yeah so there's a checklist uh, check it out and then I fill 
I find that very, very useful. Even if you're just like deploying like a regular web app, I mean, like, why not just tune up the performance? This one. Mm -hmm. well, uh, no. Next page. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I think the one that you disabled was disable slow start after idle. Yeah, that's yeah. the slow start restart. You don't yeah. need that. Not necessary. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, well, um, this reading this book took me back into Ethereal or Wireshark, as it's called these yeah. days. Yeah. And um, one of the things I really liked was when I combine chapter two and three, you see all the things you have to do when you make a UDP packet uh, that is already inside the TCP. So, but you can make your own tweaks in the UDP while the TCP is kind of static and it will act the way it does um, uh, if you need to make changes uh, for the UDP you can add those on to the... So what, what kind of stuff? Uh, the checks, uh, maybe you don't need all the checks uh, maybe you want to send more data at the same time. Um, so this is, an, this is book club, not panel, so that's why <laughs> it's a little vague. Okay. Yeah. Is that the, the, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything else? <laughs> no, not from this one. Uh, if you go back, to, go back one page, at the far bottom, no, 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 the chapter two. Chapter two. All the way to the bottom. The one that they conclude all the way through the book that makes the biggest um, impact is the compress static data. Yeah. So turn on the GZIP flag in the proxy or wherever it is. One of, one of the big like things that they just keep talking about in this, like this whole book, Really could have just been summed up with, uh, it's not, it's nothing. The biggest performance bottleneck is latency. It's uh, not bandwidth. Yeah, not bandwidth, and just send for fewer requests is pretty much the uh, the the overall theme of the whole book. Um, Move your server closer to yeah. your client, uh, yeah. where your client is, CDN. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of stuff, yeah. so In that HP two. Well, we haven't got to the HTTP2 chat yet. Yeah, you can come to the next book, <laughs> yeah. which we'll, we're yeah. going to cover HTTP2. Well, actually, to, to, like, my style was like inviting Ilya over to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> Everybody can talk uh, about it. I contacted him, actually, about the book club, uh, but we couldn't find a good time uh, here to do a... Because he's in you know California, yeah. and like the time book club's on is like 4 in the morning. Yeah. So. The time he actually difference. already yeah. agreed to come to the conference uh, and like talk. And then he just two days ago sent me like, yeah, the Chrome web team he, schedule. He, he came to Singapore once, talking at uh, Red Hot Ruby. Red Hot, yeah. yeah. That was three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah still. Time to come again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Me? Yeah. Well, my favorite chapter was four, which was on TLS and mm -hmm. security. Um, so it's a, it, it goes through quite interestingly what you do to get your... Um, uh, your application secure um, and it basically explains to you all the everything from you know basic cryptography to certificates and certificate trade uh, certificate chains and trust and all this stuff um, uh, and also like the yeah, it's a mess with the certificate industry there is old styles of doing revocation there's a new style of doing revocation there's an upcoming style of doing revocation uh, just read the chapter uh, it's but this, hang on, what, what is that? You forget, we're doing book club, so tell okay. us about it. <laughs> All right, okay. uh, right, so where do you start? Um, certificates. You're, you're, um, stapling, let's talk about stapling. Yeah, stapling. Stapling is, is something that is going to be the, the default solution going forward. That's what everybody's talking about. So stapling is used for certificate rev revocation. Certificates basically tell a browser with, uh, or the, the client that your website is something that can be trusted. Uh, and the server is claiming who or who he or she or it is is. Um, so the problem with that model is um, that if you have 
uh, something that if you have a, a certificate that you put on the server, but later you realize that maybe the private key got somehow compromised, uh, or the certificate is loose, so to say, uh, anybody else can also put the same certificate on their server and feign to be you, uh, then you, you want to go and revoke it. And basically, before it expires, you want to say, you know, th don't trust the certificate. The standard way of doing that um, is something called uh, certific uh, CRLs, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, certification revocation lists. Unfortunately, so this is basically a massive list of certificates that is uh, published uh, by the certificate authorities, like the, the bunch of them. And the browsers go and look at them and check if they uh, if the if your, the certificate it's trying to access is in that list. If it is, then it doesn't trust it and gives you an error. The problem is these lists are massive, especially after the SSL attack from last year. These lists mm -hmm. are ridiculously massive, and the browsers sometimes just die even trying to get through them. Oh, wow. And the prob and, and to preserve the user experience, the default uh, behavior of all browsers is if, if for some reasons they can't access the CRL list or they can't access through the CRL list, they believe that the certificate is valid and move on. Mm. Uh, this is in every single browser. I think Firefox has a button to change that behavior, uh, but by default, all browsers just accept the certificate if CRL uh, lookup changes. Um, the same with OCSP, which is a, a protocol-based way of doing the same thing, but again, same problem, all browsers fail open. So the new way of doing things, which what they're trying to do is, when the server sends the certificate over to the browser at the first connection, it also puts the OCSP response that it just um, it just received itself or within a few hours with the certificate and gives it to the browser so that the browser doesn't need to itself to go and check the OCSP response. Um, that's going to be the way to go forward. Um, and it's called certificate sta OCSP stapling, I believe. I think there's a small box on that going forward. If you scroll down first. Uh, no, uh, probably uh, somewhere. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's what every, where everybody's going. But it's it's important to know like how these things work um, because they're they're pretty. Um, there's something that we we rely on all the time uh, when we just assume things are working. Uh, but it's important to know how things are achieved. What what's actually happening? I remember after reading this chapter, I had to set up uh, uh, TLS connection for a server. And I remember doing this a few years ago and just being going, what the hell am I even doing? I'm just yeah. copying and pasting commands off you know, Stack Overflow. No, of Experts Exchange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is years ago. Uh, and But now, now after uh, after uh, reading this chapter, I came back to it and I was like, oh, I just get what's going on. I just understood it. Um, so it was just awesome kind of like uh, you read the something other, and you suddenly understand it. Well, yeah. I guess that's what the point is. But. The other interesting thing that the book says is that um, a lot of people give this uh, thing that, oh, TLS is uh, uh, competitionally expensive mm -hmm. and having secure connections to whatever, you know, to, between your server and your client is, it adds latency and adds, yeah, which is, it's completely bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, Google's proven a few years ago when they did this massive report about uh, you know, it's state of the art servers. How much actual increase in computation, like how much overhead you add, and it's well, just there is overhead in latency though because it's got additional handshakes. Yeah, so there's overhead in latency, but there's an overhead in actual processing yeah. of of the encryption and the data and stuff like that. But if you just keep alive, you reuse the connection. Yeah, exactly. Then. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only an initial. So it's only project, one yeah. extra, uh, and and also the CRL all, bit. If that, that it's works. like I think it's like seven or something, but you can use like um, like fast fast open or something. Right. Like TLS fast open yeah. or something. Yeah. So or it sort of assumes yeah. it's good. But the point is, there's no real good reason against using it cool. anymore. So if you have anything that's you know important, in fact, Chrome's really pushing for it these days. Oh, if you have anything. Google's dropping like non SSL sites from uh, yeah. their ad exchange. So, like, I know that. So, speaking of which, right? The because cool they're thing, migrating everything yeah, to SSL. Yeah. Speaking of which, the cool thing, which is ha going to happen very, very soon, is IETF, Mozilla, and EFF. No, EFF, Mozilla, and someone else uh, is coming up with this new thing called uh, Let's Encrypt, uh -huh. uh, which is. Uh, which is a super cool, um, like a single line uh, utility that you just type in your, you know, favorite Linux box or whatever, and it generates a certificate for you. Um, 
it's a free, valid SSL certificate for any website you want, uh, installed and provisioned in one command. Um, and this is happening uh, in September. So keep a, if you, I mean, like going forward, you basically have no reason not to have a secure website. It must be people who like build a business on selling certificates like this. They must be pissed off. Yeah. So, so the only thing is like in certificates, there are different yeah. levels of certificates, okay. and each level of certificate defines what, uh, how much the certificate authority has verified your. Uh, existence mm -hmm. and your like who you really are so this is the lowest version okay so they're still gonna make money on the the EV and the DV certificates okay. so this is the basic version so no, but still uh, so sorry we'll skip you yeah there's um, start SSL as well which is another freebie yeah but the but yeah, it's only a year or something isn't it is it okay. yeah Unless you go, no, it's, I guess it's, yeah. <laughs> they, they, it's like a freemium model. They, okay. they give you a year free, but this is this is free for good. Um, so huh? we could skip me, but I'll, I'll just quickly go. Um, the Sorry. one thing I remember, which which I didn't understand, was uh, the way that mobile data works. So there's a chapter in here on like uh, like mobile networks, uh, and there's if when you're so where you are right now, uh, there's like a low-powered radio sort of deal, um, which kind of figures out where you are, what your account details are, whether you've got like a valid um, like SIM, all this kind of stuff, um, and then if if there's like an in, incoming um, like data packet for you, uh, what will happen is it'll like I guess uh, it'll figure out which sort of like one of these meta towers that you're connected to and then it'll th then so it, go, it figures out where you are and then it uses that to figure out like the nearest like real tower to send like a proper connection and then it establishes like a proper like a data connection so it sort of has like this two level sort of thing um, and another interesting thing is like if you've got um, like a, a long running a long running uh, TCP connection uh, what happens it doesn't actually need to keep the okay. So when 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 you're transmitting data, that's like super expensive for your battery. Uh, like it chews uh, enormous amounts of power. So the what you want to do is like you know reduce the amount of data that you're transmitting uh, at any time. Um, so you might think, oh well, uh, you know you want to shut down the connections uh, between you know if you're doing something like long polling or something. Uh, but it's okay because. What, it, what ends up happening is that the like the base station kind of acts like a proxy, uh, and it will maintain it'll it'll hold the connection open to the server for you, and only when it receives data does it reopen the um, like the mobile connection and send the packets to you. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Um, what does it work with TLS though? Or yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, it's just like, a, it's just a, at a lower level. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's 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 like yes. Yeah. Okay. Low level. Um, right. And yeah, that was that was interesting. Um, and the TLS, uh, the the slow start thing, I thought was interesting. Like because, yeah, if you send a whole bunch of, if you're trying to download a whole bunch of small files, that's bad because you'll never reach the maximum capacity of of a single connection um, because you'll finish the file before you've. Um, increase the window like the the window increases over a number of seconds so if it yeah if it takes more than a couple of seconds uh, to download your file you'll never actually uh, reach like bandwidth saturation so um, yet another reason to use bundlers and like concatenation tools so yeah that's it so that's, uh, that's well yeah oh. this book book club was never about JavaScript this is about it's bandwidth about what it was. Um, yeah. distribution Awesome. Yeah, so, so do we just talk about Nima. And um, before we end, uh, I just want to try out to find uh, speakers for the next meetup. It will probably be uh, next, the, the second or third Tuesday of, of every month. Now I try to do it so that it doesn't, so that uh, it takes on the slot for the book club on that week. Right, so uh, so next month is probably on 11 or 18 August, and.
18, okay. And, and yeah, so, so, uh, so we we'll try to find first time speakers, uh, anyone want to volunteer, preferably like those who are new to JavaScript or new to this meetup, anyone wants to volunteer? Just a question. Yeah. What exactly are you looking for from the beginning? Like express uh, how we learn something or what kind of stuff you are learning? Yeah. Um, maybe. Well, you can like, for example, I I learned about SSL at work because I had to uh, configure the server to talk SSL. Um, it's a Java server to like uh, it's like a secure bitstream and with Google and so on and so forth. So that is like how I learned about SSL. How to use you know the open SSL client to read a certificate and then understand what that is about like mm -hmm. and then afterwards I give a talk to uh, our Singapore office on SSL just be like here is what I learned and then just by giving that talk first of all I had a chance to summarize what I learned and then see and also revalidate what I believe is true right and then also, by giving that talk, I give my uh, colleague, uh, colleagues an opportunity to learn about SSL. Also, there are colleagues who are more experienced than I am dealing with SSL, so they give me feedback on certain things that I didn't know of. So that's another opportunity to learn more things. So for a beginner, it's just like after you learn about something, give a talk on it. It's just like a it reinforces like a what you learn, mm -hmm. and yeah. then and also give other people a chance to criticize you. And then help help you learn more about that that thing. So it's so only good. So like frameworks, libraries, um, methodology, yeah. technology. You know, pick you know some if you find it interesting. If it's gardening, even you know, if you can <laughs> if you can put it into an interesting talk, whatever. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Suing is trending. Suing. There was a day some talk on suing that was oh. super popular. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. For inspiration. Yeah. Inspiration. Yeah, I, I can volunteer myself. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, of course, just express my learning and talk about my work. I don't know. Sure, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Joel. Joel. Call me Joe. Joe. Better. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Cool.